Hello, and welcome to SolidCam Professor. This video is an introduction to SolidCam iMachining, showing just how easy it is to program with iMachining, use the technology wizard, simulate toolpath, and generate G-code. Before we begin, let's disable our automatic cam part definition settings. In the SolidWorks menu, I'll click on SolidCam, SolidCam Settings. Under Automatic Cam Part Definition in the list, I will disable Definition of CNC Controller, Definition of Coordinate System, Definition of Stock, and Definition of Target. By default, these settings are enabled and can be especially helpful for a 30-day trial test drive user by automating the Cam Part Definition process. For this example though, I've already built a solid body representing the stock material and I'll show you how defining a coordinate system in SolidCAM can be quite simple. I'll click OK to close the dialog. Here we have this part ready to go into SolidCAM for programming. First, I'll create a new CAM part using the SolidCAM drop-down menu. I'll go to SolidCAM, New, and select Milling. I'll be prompted to save this new milling part. Note that we now offer a new mode for creating and saving CAM parts. Internal manages CAM projects with a single SOLIDWORKS model file using a part-only mode. The CAM part is created and all CAM data is stored inside the original .sldprt file. Internal is beneficial for users who build both the CAD and CAM, bringing SOLIDCAM's integration to a whole new level. I'll select Internal to create CAM part and click OK. In the Milling Part Data dialog on the left, I'll select the Haas SS3XG milling post for my CNC controller from the drop-down menu. Next, I'll click Define under Coordinate System to create our home position. I'll use the Select Face option to define Coordsys, and I'll place Coordsys Origin to Corner of Model Box from the drop-down menu. Then, I'll click on the top face of our stock model in the SOLIDWORKS graphics area, and the coordinate system will appear on the top left corner of our model box. I'll click the green check mark at the top left of our Cord Sys Manager, then click OK to accept the default Z levels. We've just created our first coordinate system, MAC1 Position 1. I'll click OK to accept. Next, I'll select the Stock button and choose 3D Model from the Defined by drop-down menu. I'll select the Stock model from the SOLIDWORKS graphics area and click OK to accept. Then. I'll click the target button and select our target model in the SOLIDWORKS graphics area. The target is now defined and I'll click OK to accept. Finally, under iMachining data, we will define the machine and work material parameters. I'll choose the default Haas SS for our machine database. Then I'll select aluminum with a 100 Brunel hardness number and a hardness Rockwell of 60 on the B scale from the Material Database drop-down menu. These database selections will affect the cutting conditions in the Technology Wizard, which I'll explain in more detail when we add our first iMachining operation. Our CAM part is now fully defined and I'll click OK to complete the CAM part definition process. Now we can move to the SolidCAM Manager on the left to add iMachining toolpath to machine our part. I'll right-click Operations, Add Milling Operation, and select 2D iMachining. When the iMachining Operation dialog appears, notice the drop-down menu under Technology. Here, we can choose an iRough, iRest, or iFinish machining strategy, all from within this iMachining Operation dialog. In the Technology branch, You'll see that the parameter options change accordingly between each strategy. For this example, we will only use the default iRough technology and perform the rough machining of the outside contour, center pocket, and pocket ledge. Let's click on the New button to define the machining geometry for the outside contour. When defining geometry in iMachining, it is important to note that the geometry is defined as a pocket that can be open, closed and or semi-closed. This part is a perfect example showing all these types of geometries. For the first operation we will define the geometry as an open pocket. In the SOLIDWORKS graphics area I'll pick on the top edge of our stock model and select Auto Constant Z in the Geometry Edit dialog on the left. Then I'll click Yes to accept the selection. 
Auto Constant Z will close the chain by automatically selecting all connecting entities on the same Z level. Next, I'll pick the top edge of our target model and again select Auto Constant Z on the left to close the chain. I'll click Yes to accept the selection. In the chain list, I'll right click on the outer chain, Chain 1, and choose Mark Chain as Open. This will enable the tool to approach from the outside. Now I'll click OK to exit the Geometry Edit dialog, where I can move on to defining a tool from within the tool branch. Clicking Select will bring up the tool table. I'll click on the Add Milling Tool button at the bottom left of the dialog. Then I'll add an end mill by selecting it from the Milling Tools list. Under the Topology tab, I can define the physical dimensions of the tool. I will enter a value of 9.5 millimeters for the diameter. I'll keep the default remaining tool parameters, but change the number of flutes to 5. Now, let's switch to the iData tab. We'll use the default 45 medium value for the helical angle parameter. This parameter affects the cutting conditions and step-down values generated by the wizard, which you'll see when we reach the Technology Wizard branch. Clicking Select will confirm the tool definition and exit the tool table. Next on the tree are Levels, where I'll define the milling levels. I'll click on Upper Level and simply select the top face of our stock in the SOLIDWORKS graphics area, then click OK to accept. Next, I'll click on Pocket Depth, select the bottom edge of our target model as shown here, and click OK to accept the selection. Notice that the Milling Levels fields have changed to red. This is because the values are associative to the picked entities, and if the model changes, these associative values will also change. Now, let's switch to the Technology Wizard branch. This wizard automatically calculates the cutting conditions for the iMachining technology, taking into account the machine, work material, tool data, and milling levels defined for the operation. By default, the wizard will use automatic to calculate the ideal step-down values. As you can see, we'll step down the full depth, 19.05 millimeters. The output cutting data is displayed below in two views and updates automatically when adjusting the machining level slider. This slider gives us the ability to choose at what aggressiveness we would like to machine. As you can see, step over and chip thickness is represented graphically and increases or decreases when adjusting the slider. For this example, let's use the default position of the machining level slider, 3. In the Technology branch, we can confirm the step-down and cutting angle values generated by the wizard. By default, we'll also leave a 0.24 mm offset on the wall. In the Link branch, we'll leave the default settings which don't apply to this particular geometry. iMachining will enter and exit the cut where it calculates best. I'll name this operation iRough Outside Contour and then click Save and Calculate to add it to the cam tree and calculate the toolpath. Let's look at our result. I'll select Simulate to display our simulation control panel. We'll use our default host CAD mode to present the wireframe toolpath by pressing the play button. The corners are cleared first during simulation and then the entire contour is machined. Let's exit the simulation and iMachining operation dialogs by clicking Exit for both. Next, we'll define the rough machining of the center pocket. Let's add a new iMachining operation. I'll right-click Operations in the Solid Cam Manager, Add Milling Operation, and select 2D iMachining. When the iMachining Operation dialog appears, we'll use the default iRough for technology. I'll click the New button. When the Geometry Edit dialog appears, I'll pick on the lower contour of the pocket in the SolidWorks graphics area, as shown here. I'll select Auto Constant Z on the left to close the chain, and then click Yes to accept the selection. I'll click OK to complete the geometry definition and exit the Geometry Edit dialog. Next up, I'll define our tool by clicking on the tool branch. I'll click Select to bring up the tool table. For this operation, we'll use the same tool created in the previous operation by selecting it from the list. 
I'll click Select to exit the tool table, where we can move on to the Levels branch. I'll click on Upper Level and select the top face of our target model in the SOLIDWORKS graphics area, then click OK to accept. Next, I'll select Pocket Depth and pick the lower face of the pocket, then click OK to accept the selection. We'll use the default cutting conditions generated by the Technology Wizard with a machining level aggressiveness of 3. In the Technology branch, we can confirm the step down and cutting angle values generated by the wizard. By default, we'll also leave a 0.24 mm offset on the wall. In the Link branch, we'll use the default ramping angle of 3.5 for our helical entry. I'll name this operation iRough Center Pocket and then click Save and Calculate to add it to the cam tree and calculate the toolpath. Let's look at our result. I'll select Simulate to display the wireframe toolpath by pressing the play button. The tool performs the helical entry and then the pocket roughing toolpath. Let's exit the simulation and then the iMachining operation dialog by clicking Exit. Lastly, we'll define the rough machining of the pocket ledge. Let's add a new iMachining operation. I'll right click operations in the Solid Cam Manager, add milling operation, and select 2D iMachining. When the iMachining operation dialog appears, we'll use the default iRough 4 technology. I'll click the New button. When the Geometry Edit dialog appears, I'll pick on the lower contour of the pocket ledge in the SolidWorks graphics area, as shown here. I'll select Auto Constant Z on the left to close the chain, and then click Yes to accept the selection. In the chain list, I'll right click on Chain 1 and select Mark Open Edges. In the SOLIDWORKS graphics area, I'll pick the outside edge of the pocket ledge. Notice the single entity has turned black, meaning it is now marked as open and the tool can enter from that semi-open edge. I'll click OK to accept, and then click OK again to exit the Geometry Edit dialog. Next, I'll define our tool by clicking on the tool branch. I'll click Select to bring up the tool table. For this operation, we'll use the same tool used in the previous operations by selecting it from the list. I'll click Select to exit the tool table where we can move on to the Levels branch. I'll click on Upper Level and again select the top face of our target model in the SOLIDWORKS graphics area. Then click OK to accept. Next, I'll select Pocket Depth and pick the lower face of the ledge for the machining depth. Then click OK to accept the selection. Again, we will use the default cutting conditions generated by the Technology Wizard with a machining level aggressiveness of 3. In the Technology branch, we can confirm the step down and cutting angle values generated by the wizard. By default, we'll also leave a 0.24 mm offset on the wall. In the Link branch, we'll leave the default settings, which don't apply to this particular geometry iMachining will enter and exit the cut where it calculates best. I'll name this operation iRough Pocket Ledge, and then click Save and Calculate to add it to the cam tree and calculate the toolpath. Finally, I'll select Simulate to display our wireframe toolpath. This time, I will highlight all the added operations in the cam tree by selecting them. This will enable us to play the toolpath for all operations. I'll press the Operation Step Mode button to play the toolpath per each operation. The toolpath looks great. Next, I'll switch to the Solid Verify tab and play the simulation again using the Operation Step Mode button. The tool moving through the solid stock material also looks great. Now, let's exit the simulation and iMachining operation dialogs and generate G-code. From the Solid Cam Manager, I'll right-click Operations, G-Code All, Generate. The generated G-Code for a 3-axis Haas SS opens in Notepad. It's that easy to cam apart with iMachining and generate G-Code with Solid Cam. For an even further in-depth look at programming this part with SolidCam iMachining, please go to exercise number 1 iMachining walkthrough, a chapter in our interactive guide. Thanks for watching. 
For more great SolidCAM Professor videos, visit the Professor tab at www.solidcam.com.